Here. All right, we are live. Sorry for the delay, guys, um, but we are going to get started this morning. I am so excited to have one of my friends and fellow girl boss coaches on talking with us today. Uh, Sarah Gobb and I met at a leadership retreat a few years ago, and it was kind of like divine intervention. We end up in the same. We ended up in the same room, and we were just like sitting on the floor with our computers, brainstorming, and. Um, um, the rest is history. I take this girl. I learned so much from her daily, and um, she's going to talk to us today about time management, which I think is important no matter where you're at in your business, especially when you're a new coach trying to figure out how to build this business and where to find the time. Uh, Sarah was a full time RN, I think, working two full time jobs, going through fertility issues. She was pregnant, running a wedding business. This girl does everything and I don't know how she does it there might be two of her um, but maybe she'll tell us that today uh, but she's a seven star diamond coach in her first business center four star diamond qualifying in her second business center she's got a third business center and probably like eight more after that but she's a success club five all-star probably legend almost at this point elite um, 2014 was premiere she pretty much rocks and she knows her stuff when it comes to making the most of your time um, when you sit down to work your business and really how to get this thing going and make it a full-time venture regardless of your circumstances so I'm stoked I've got my notebook um, and Sarah and her sweet little girl Sydney are both here with us uh, so I'm so excited um, I'll pass it over to you. I'm literally getting my clean sheet of paper out because I know you're going to bring it. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm so pumped to talk to you guys. I, I've never done the Hangout um, format in, in a team call. Do you guys use a Q&A at all? I uh, usually post in the team page. And okay, then cool. uh, if they've got questions. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, they can ask there. So I'm going to go well, ahead. Well, this little thing right here is a perfect reason and perfect timing to show you guys today how we really need to be diligent about our, our time and how we spend it because sometimes precious little nuggets will throw curveballs and they will not let you um, hustle when you plan to hustle. And, you know, life, life, that's what life's about. That's the beauty of life is that every day we don't really know what to expect. We can go in with our best intentions. And as long as we end the day knowing that we did our best, that's truly all that matters. But I, I just want to share a few things because I know that time management is one of the biggest roadblocks for so many coaches, no matter what season of coaching they're in. And I'm really passionate about just showing people that it's really not about not having time. It's about finding time and making the best use of it. So like Steph said, just a little bit about when I started, I was working two full-time nursing jobs. I was clocking about 80, 90 hours a week. I was, I think, borderline crazy. And I'm not really sure why I thought I could do this, but I'm really glad that I believed that I could and that I tried it because it was worth every ounce of, of hustle and time that I spent on it. My husband basically decided a couple days before reporting to spring training that he no longer wanted to play baseball. So we had to decide what we were going to do because bills don't pay themselves. And I kind of just went into full on work mode. I was working like a crazy person at the hospital and I clearly didn't have time to go to the gym. So that's part of the reason why a challenge pack was, um, enticing to me. And then I thought worst case scenario, you know, I might as well just, I'll get a workout program and if I can make a business out of it, great. But I'm going to do my damnedest to make a successful business out of it with what I have to work with. But just like everybody else, I only had 24 hours a day and juggling everything else. I just really had to sit down and decide when and how I was going to make this work. So today we're going to talk about time management and how to hustle. So why I asked about the Q and A was because I want you guys all to, you know, just wherever you are, raise your head, nod your head, raise your hand, nod your head. Like how many of you have heard the excuse, I don't have time. I mean, I've heard it. I've even used it myself a couple times. We, we all have heard it, whether it's from our coaches, our challengers, our prospects, or, or ourselves. We've all heard that saying before. But I love the quote 
don't be fooled by the calendar because there's only as many days in the year that you make use of. And I was reading an article not long ago about how time is relative and really that there's two different types of time, clock time and real time. And what the author meant by that is, you know, think about when you're sitting at the DMV and two hours will feel like 12 because it's brutal. But when your little baby turns 12, it'll feel like it was two seconds. And that's because time is something that we feel. And I believe that we just have to be more aware of how we're feeling our time and how we choose to spend it. Because we all have the time only if we're good at making it. So repeat that. You have the time. You just have to be good at making it. So I also want to talk today about hustle because I believe that with the good use of time, you also, silly girl, you also have to hustle. So what I mean by that is you can't aimlessly work through one hour a day. All I had was one hour. Working two full-time jobs, I didn't have endless amounts of time to work just kind of lollygagging around hoping I was doing the right things. I had to be so diligent about how I was spending my time and I had to make sure I hustled because you can't expect six-figure results when you're only putting in time um, aimlessly without without an action associated to what you're supposed to be doing with that time and I hustle really hard and I got to a point of where I was afraid of owning my hustle because I didn't want to create unrealistic expectations for my team and I was scared of sharing how hard I hustled because I didn't want them to think that they had to do the same. Um, but then I started to remember, you know what? No, like this is the same mindset that we get in when we're afraid of sharing our fitness journey when we're starting out as a coach. We're afraid, you know, what people are going to think or or how they're going to judge us about how I was waste, spending my time. I was afraid of how people were going to judge that or what I was sacrificing. I got in my own head and I had to put an end to it and remember, you know what? I am not creating unrealistic expectations for other people. I'm simply sharing what's realistic for me, what's realistic for my goals, my passion, and my why. And you know what? If you didn't know it, you're your own boss, so you can decide what works for you. Just don't tell me that you want to be a two-star or a five-star and not freaking be ready to hustle because it takes hustle. So I love the quote by Gary Vaynerchuk. He's our keynote speaker at Summit. I'm so pumped to just be starstruck by him at Summit. But he, he says, hustle isn't working obnoxiously hard. It's working obnoxiously smart. And that quote is just money. It's so, so, so good. Every, every single aspect of that. It's just like you have to work smarter, not harder. Same thing with your hustle. You have to not work obnoxiously hard. Just make sure you're doing the right things. And I don't think hustle is something that you're born with. I think it's something that you work at. So the tips I'm going to give you today about how to hustle hard and make better use of your time, they're not going to come easy. So I would love if you guys, you know, when you're sharing, like Carl said, you know, we have to be sharing our vitals on, the, uh, on our social media because so many people forget that that's the easiest way of breadcrumbing. You guys, like the, I'm doing my PD, I'm hanging out with my friend on a Zoom call, you know, like those are the easiest things to share. So use the hashtag let's hustle because we all have to be ready to hustle. This The time is now, like it's springtime and we're gonna get into the thick of uh, what can typically be a hard season if you let it be. So get ready to hustle and I'd love to blow up that hashtag. So I believe there's only three ways to spend your time, in thoughts and conversation and in action. And they're all essential to good relationships, both in family and in business. Think about it, if you spend all day just thinking about how great your spouse is but you never tell them, they're not gonna know. They're not gonna feel that love and that appreciation. Just like if you spend all day dreaming about your five-star goal or your income goal or your why or staying home or whatever it is, but you never take the action to send an invite, what good is spending that time dreaming? That's wasted time, essentially. So I wanna get you back to thinking about how to spend majority of your time in the actions um, because that's really where the magic happens. So 
Let's get to the tips and I'm gonna help you guys find time and make the best use of it. So step number one is refocus and remember why. I know that sounds so cliche, but if you don't start with this intention every single day, then sitting down to do your work is gonna feel like a chore, like a chore. Looking at all the blessings that you're gonna get from this business, what it's provided for you, what it can provide for you, Remembering that we get the honor to talk to these new people that are going to be vulnerable with us and, and let us go on this journey with them. If you sit down and you look at your mile long to do list and you're like, God, I have so much to do today. Like, I, I, I wish I could be doing this, that or the other or, you know, this is such a pain or this is going to take so long. It's going to feel like a freaking pain. Change your mindset before you even get started into your power hour and it's going to make a world of difference. I really believe the main reason people get burnt out and stressed out is because they're focusing too much on the tasks and not the big picture goals, not that main intention every single day of why they're doing this. And remember, if you're not having fun doing this, you're freaking doing it wrong. This is fun. You're your own boss. So like get back to what brings you joy. And, and like I said, start with that before you do anything else. Step number two is evaluate what you have going on. So I'm going to relate a lot of what I talked about about your fitness goals too because it's just like with fitness. You have to take a look at what you're currently doing and why it's not working. You know, if you want six-pack abs and you did your 22-minute workout but then you had five donuts for dinner, that's why it's not freaking working. Just like with your time, you have to sit back and look at your week and look at what you have going on and, and start to just be more intentional about what you have that you can um, squeeze in or modify or make a few changes to, just like with our fitness. Where can we just make small changes instead of going at something cold turkey and completely changing what you have going on? What can you work to tweak at? So what I want you to do is, whether you're a planner person or, or whatever, just sit down with yourself or maybe your significant other and look at what you have going on the rest of this week and where you can carve out some time to make better choices for, it's nap time. <laughs> Um, make some better choices on how you're going to spend your time with your business. So then after you've looked at kind of just a broad overview of what you have going on this week, I want you to look at your goals and reverse engineer those goals and start to just see where you can maybe spend a little bit of time chipping away. You got to say that too. She likes to talk. She's got some advice for you too. She'll be later in the steps. Um, but yeah, so then, so after step two, I want you to have your planner with some new highlights on where you want to spend some of your time. And then I want to have a list of your goals on where you're going to plug that in later in the next steps. Step number three is look at your excuses. So I'm going to say it. They're buttholes. They all stink. And we all have them, including myself and little Miss Sydney. Um, some <laughs> excuses I could have used were, you know, when I first started the first year of being a coach, I had three family deaths. I, um, had a very unsupportive family. I was a new homeowner. I had, um, no technology experience. I failed flat on my face trying to launch a website my first week as a coach. I took probably a year to learn how to use an iPhone. Um, <laughs> we went through infertility struggles. I went through the journey of being a new mom and, and all that stuff. Like life literally went from every single change you could possibly imagine in the two years I've been a coach. But you have to make your excuses your reason. And look at the excuses you've been holding back before and post in your team page right now and be vulnerable. Share exactly what has been holding you back. Like get real with yourself and, and, and start to recognize the excuses that you might be making without even realizing it. Because the first step to changing something that's holding you back is acknowledging it. So I want you guys to just be a support system for each other and don't enable those excuses though. Once you get vulnerable enough to share them with your team, share them with your partners, don't be like, oh yeah, it's okay, you know? Yeah, it's okay, but it's better if you make a change. So this is like the bless and release phase. You know, you have to acknowledge those excuses, get them out there and get ready to crush them because they're no longer going to be an excuse. Step number four is committing to a sacrifice. 
So make a list of things that you're willing to sacrifice to invest that time into your business instead. So for me, that was Pinterest, doing my DIY stuff that I love, um, showering, you know, the usual. <laughs> but um, I think that's that was worth it to me. I'm not saying go around looking like a troll, but well, you can if you want. But like, you know, it was more important for me to build this freaking empire than care what the checkout lady at Target thought I looked like um, or the cleanliness of my home or, or whatever it is, you know. Netflix is huge for people and it is one of my biggest pet peeves when I have people saying, you know, I want five star, I want this, I want that. But then on their social media, they're sharing that they just finished eight episodes in one sitting of a certain show. Well, that's fine every now and then. I'm all about balance and I really am striving to be better at that myself too. However, I reward myself with things like that after I freaking hustled my balls off you know like you don't sit and, and and waste a day being a TV you know real getting sucked into reality TV you're, you're unless you're okay with saying that was literally more important than my why really no not even close like remember they're not forever sacrifices they're just things that you're gonna do for a little bit to build a strong foundation Think about it. Two years from now, when you're hitting these goals, when you've accomplished your, your reasons for doing this and you're able to live out your why, are you going to look back and say, gosh, I wish I watched that season of Netflix in one day? Or are you going to say, I'm so freaking glad I hustled and that sacrifice was so worth it? Guarantee you it's going to be number two. And then number five, step number five is track your time. Just like fitness. What's the matter, Pugan? Um, just like with fitness, again, you have to track what you're doing to know where you need to make changes. So I would love if you guys all woke up tomorrow morning and tracked every single minute of your day. You know, did you spend an extra five minutes after your breakfast scrolling Facebook? Write that down. Write down every single thing that you're doing so then in the later steps you can be like aware of how much time is really being wasted because an extra 15 minutes is going to do wonders for your business if you're going to get ready to use that 15 minutes wisely. You'll be so shocked at where you can find time and where you can fit in things to multitask. And what I mean by multitasking is, you know, in your drive, can you listen to more PD? Little things like that. I'm not saying, you know, sacrifice, multitask time with your family while you're on your phone. That is not multitasking. That is, that is a business burner for sure. What I mean by multitasking is things where, you know, are, are you going on a spin bike or walking outside where you can plug in and do a coach call while you're walking or, you know, things like that, that, that don't take a lot of brain power. But what I want you to do in this step is really just evaluate what you have going on so you're ready to revamp that cal calendar and that those highlights you made in step number two. Now you're going to take what you did in step number two and you're going to add in what you vowed to sacrifice in the last step and you're going to add in those things that you were, were raw enough and real enough to acknowledge as excuses. So now you're going to have a whole new calendar with a whole new time and a whole new purpose. And then step number six is making a plan. I love the quote by Zig Ziglar, people complain of lack of time when really lack of direction is the issue. And that's so true, you know, like for example, this morning I get sidetracked. It's a daily struggle, you guys. I, I did not get what I wanted to do done this morning because I opened my stupid inbox before I got done with what I was supposed to be doing. I got sucked into a message. It was important and it was really uplifting and it, it was a bucket filler, but at the same time, now I'm behind on what I was supposed to get done and who knows what she'll let me do today, you know? So you have to be diligent about how you're spending that time and, and have direction with your time. I am a Dave Ramsey fan and in his uh, money management tips, he, he suggests that you delegate a purpose for every single dollar. If your dollar doesn't have a place that it's gonna be spent, it's gonna get wasted. So I want you to think about that with your time because if you don't delegate your time to a task, it's going to get spent doing something else. And I've had a lot going on lately and excuses, excuses, but I did not set my calendar and my intention for this morning. I just blocked off time to work. 
well, what was I supposed to be doing when I was working? I didn't tell, I didn't delegate out things that I wanted done. Yes, I have a list, but if I would have said, you know, eight to eight 15, I'm going to do answer my inbox. I probably wouldn't have wound myself up in the situation and I wouldn't have had, you know, a kid that's not going to nap without getting back to my to-do list. You are just a sassy pants today. <laughs> my goodness. Like, where'd that, where'd that come from? You, I don't even know what your problem is. But what I'm saying is, you know, you guys have to really be diligent about creating a plan with your time. If you find all this extra time to work, that's great. Props to you because finding time is a hard and a hard step, and that's why I had it in one of the beginning steps. But what you do with that time is the hardest step. And it all takes practice and diligence to keep trying to be better every single day. Some things that I love doing are working from lists. I have a must do, a wish to do, and a need to do list. Because then I can kind of prioritize when I do have extra time where I'm gonna spend that time working from those lists. But if you just do one thing from the must do list every single day and eat that frog, you will make strides forward, I promise you. And then setting strict business hours has really helped in abiding by them. Um, I set strict business hours, but my husband is gone probably 90% of the time. So I'm trying to balance being a partial single mom as well, which can be really hard to do business hours when you have a little human that has their own set of business hours. So, you know, you can set them. And like I said at the beginning of the call, as long as you're doing your best, that's really all that matters, you know? I had good intentions when I woke up this morning. I got sidetracked, but I know there was a purpose for me answering that message. And I know I'll get back to what I was supposed to get done at another time because I have my list that I'm working through. And as long as you're chipping away every single day, like I said, you're going to make strides forward. But just... Share those things with your team. Share those business hours with your team. Let them cheer you on and, and keep you accountable because it's hard. We could all work at this job 24 hours a day, I'm sure, because we all love what we do. But um, take a step back and just look at the areas in your business that are sucking the most of your time from step four when you really tracked all of your time. And do your best to make a plan to make those things more efficient. I know I've shared this um, in a couple of different groups, but like, and, and with Davies before, but GSRs were a huge time sucker for me. I love them. I love connecting with new coaches, but we were going over the same questions over and over and over again. So what I did was I recorded a new coach um, GSR call, Zoom. I went over the back office, all the FAQs, what Success Club was, you know, the main things that get asked over and over again. So then when I got on my GSR, they were not only shorter and more efficient, but they were so much more personable because I could really just get down to what that coach needed from me rather than answering things that could be found in them watching a 20 minute recording. So now I require them to watch that before we get on our GSR. Um, and then most importantly, share your plan and, and your wish for your idea of an ideal week in the life of a, of a coach with your significant other. Because if they're not on the same page, if they don't know why you want this, why you're willing to work for 10 cents an hour the first year of your business, they're probably not going to be supportive. And I, I spent a lot of time, you know, you, you. we do not do that. You steep your butt. You'll be nice. It'll be nice. But, you know, I spent a lot of time complaining about how my husband wasn't supportive and didn't help and all this, but I really didn't do a good enough job of explaining why I wanted this and what this could do for our lives. So that's a final step is executing that, but don't do it alone. Do it with your partner. Do it with your success partner. Do it with your team. Do it with your upline. And really train yourself to do the most tasks that you can do in your a lot of business hours. Train yourself to be more efficient and find somebody to keep you accountable.
So with that being said, that's my call to action for you guys. I really would love you to just find an a accountability partner that can keep you accountable to these steps, accountable to your excuses and your sacrifices and your new plan. So. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Just while I talk about a few of the things that I love, love, love that you mentioned. I love owning the hustle. Um, sometimes I think as leaders we get into that that space that Sarah talked about where we don't want to talk about the hustle, but I love that that Gary Vaynerchuk quote, like, let's hustle in the right way, you know, let's hustle smart so that you walk away feeling really good. I think that in all of this it's important to remember that what we do as leaders, you're a leader if you're you know, you haven't signed your first coach yet. If you are in the leader mindset and you know where you're going, you're a leader and you need to start thinking about this stuff now so that you can inspire your team to be really plugged in and then really unplugged. I think that's so important to remember that what we're doing um, is what shows people what they can do. We're showing them what freedom looks like. So I know for me, when I plug in and I'm super smart with my time, I, I sit down inspired, you know, because then I'm like, all right, I've got until 11 o'clock and then I'm going to do something with the family. So I work really efficiently and then I get to enjoy my life. I've had people join and then say, this, is, this isn't this is for me because they saw I was just all over the place. So reflecting daily, Sarah gave us these concrete steps, but you can reflect daily like today, how did I do? How did I do with what my intentions were um, for my time and for my business? And like Sarah said, make those small changes. It's just a tiny tweak. I noticed that I was making coffee and like doing things, getting the dogs out. And it was a, it was a half an hour really that I was downstairs in my kitchen like doing stuff and I'm like, whoa, I love reading books, but I need to get an audio book because that's a half an hour of my time. I need to be hands-free because I'm doing a lot of stuff, but there was empty time in my day. So B, I think it's, it's, it's such a rad and important first step that Sarah gave us to track your time and see where your time is going because what we don't track, what we don't measure, we can't change, right? So finding those little, those little pockets of time that we can be more efficient. And then I love Sarah's nugget on turning our experience excuses into reasons. Use those as, as things that you're going to be posting about and telling people about. How did you find a solution that day to, you know, get in your work, get in your workout or build a business or, you know, you're in, maybe you're taking a bath and returning emails. And like, sometimes we get to just throw little things out like that. Like I could use this as an excuse, you know, where today we're crazy. We're trying to write an offer on a house and I hear two kids crying right now, you know, and you just, you got to make it work and make those little sacrifices in order to build this into something really amazing. Um, so I thought it would be cool, Sarah, if you could give us a quick little, um, glimpse into, a day in the life before you before you were a full-time coach really what that looked like I know for me I was nannying I had my daughter with me and it was it was all about those pockets of time a power hour wasn't happening um, and I know the majority of the coaches on the call you know are those coaches that are still in that um, business building stage I muted you and I think it's gonna make you unmute yourself so you can start working on it <laughs> Um, Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just, you know, a little, a little through what that looks like. like. Absolutely. I think that's so important because that's why I'm so passionate about tracking your time. Because right now I'm a brand new full time coach, not even a month, and it's really hard as a transition for me because I'm used to hustling in 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. That's why I need to be diligent about that now as a full time coach, but. You know, before I'd wake up, I would, I forced myself to get 20, 30 minutes less sleep so I could do my workout. First thing in the morning, I had to do my workout or I would not get it done. Grab my shake, got out the door. I usually did my PD. I listened to the TKO calls. That's Brandy Botts is my upline on the way to work or whatever webinar I missed or uh, whatever audio book I was listening to on my way to work. I would usually work, one of my jobs was in two like four hour increments, so I'd work that one and then I'd come home, grab lunch, 
go work the other one. And where I really found my time was my breaks at work. So instead of choosing to eat my lunch, gossiping with other nurses at the lunch table, I went and sat by myself in the cafeteria and I plugged in. And I, I really used that time. I, I used buffer. That was my lifesaver and auto poster because if I didn't, there's no way I could have worked my business and, and checked into my groups. And then I really didn't get lost in the notifications. You know, my coaches knew, Hey, I'm busy. If you need me, shoot me a message or shoot me a text if it's important. Um, because I'm only checking into my groups twice a day in the morning and at night. I didn't get lost in messages. And then the big thing that helped me was at night, I would answer messages for one hour. That's it. And then the next day, those messages are still there. You don't need to get lost in a back and forth conversation via messenger. I took all of my messenger notifications off my phone. And like I said, when I did check into Facebook or my groups, it was boom, team page, boom, PS page, boom, challenge group. Boom, boom, boom. Like, that's it. It was super efficient, down and dirty. I didn't go notifications. Oh, what are these hundred different things I have to look into? Nope. I knew I was checking into the three groups that were going to move my business forward. And then I also use interest lists on Facebook. If you guys don't use those, Google it. They're a game changer. So then I just had a feed for my potentials that I could like and comment. So I knew I was engaging with those people every day in five seconds versus my feed full of coaches. Those are, those amazing. are amazing. I'm going to mute you again. Mute you again. Uh, the interest lists are a must. Getting out of your news feed. I love that Sarah mentioned earlier on the call too. Like if you're watching Netflix or playing video games or whatever it is, even DIY, like I get it. I used to, I mean, I used to love that stuff too. And I still do, but it's like, what's more important. I know for me, uh, I was watching some training, um, recently that, uh, was talking about time management and it was really saying like, if we're in our newsfeed, it's that kind of that gut check. You're sitting and watching a show. This is bigger than my why. When I'm in my newsfeed, not doing things that it's that whole, we think we're overwhelmed but really it's just because we're not doing the right tasks so I'd sit there and I'd have to say to myself this is time I'm taking away from my family if that's something you want to swallow and 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 say yeah that's what's important to me then then fine but chances are I'm gonna guess probably not you know it's probably not really where you want to be spending your time and so having those little checks ins um, for yourself and I love that Sarah mentioned you know that she was focused in the task that she was doing at the time. If she was returning messages, that's what she was doing. I think as new coaches especially, we think we have to open the message immediately, write back immediately so that we don't lose them. But I think what it really does is it makes people go, whoa, you know, she's not very busy because she just like wrote back to me right away. Let like breathe. Don't open messages until you can really give it your full time and attention. Um, I've been sending a lot of voice messages, and that's been helping me with my time management now that I have a little one at home, too. And people love kind of hearing your voice. Uh, they might hear, you know, Cheyenne chirping in the background, but they understand that you're trying to, you know, you're doing it all and you're getting to things when you can, again, showing them, hmm, maybe I'd want to be a coach one day because I see her in a park with her daughter and I know that's why she's not getting back to me. Don't be the strung out, I'm not having fun, this is taking over my life coach. It's easy to do. Reflect daily on how things went and how we can change things. Um, so the last thing, because I know your time is really important and you've got Sydney to get to, but how about take us out with just kind of what has changed? And what? Yeah, like two years in February, so just over two years. So what, so what is, hasn't changed? changed? That's a better part. What hasn't changed? Yeah. I mean, yeah. literally, my life is completely different. And what I wish people could see is who I was before this. Because I only have, you know, two probably close girlfriends who are not in the Beachbody world. And they know that this version of me isn't a different person. It's a better version of who I used to be. And I used to be so just cynical and, and, and just a negative mindset, a pessimist. I, I didn't ever care to grow on myself unless it was how I looked. You know, I didn't care about growing my brain or growing my heart or, you know, um, 
I, I was very afraid to do anything because of what other people would think. And um, I, I just feel like I wish people could see that person because that's, that's the coolest change that's happened, hands down. It's made me a better wife, a better, a better mom, a better daughter, a better friend. And, and I never in a million years would have picked up a personal development book. I mean, even when I started, I was like, that's a joke. You know, these people are crazy. What did I get myself into? Like, this is a cult, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it, it's just, it's changed my life. And um, the community that that this provided for my life is just, where else can you go and, and go in your inbox and find somebody who you know is going to make you smile and you know is going to make your day better? And, I mean, there's nothing else like it. My coworkers at the hospital are amazing. Don't get me wrong. They're great people. But they're not around 24-7 like coaches. I mean, we are diehard. You know, we are the real deal. We are the real people that are going to show up through thick and thin no matter what. Like, this this is a real special thing to be a part of. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's my, my favorite change for sure. I love that. You know, so true. What goes on on the inside, that's what we want to take from the table. Thank you, ladies. Ladies, for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm grateful that we got to know you guys and learn from you. And um, you guys, you this or when your coaches miss this, this is the recording. Um, same link as the live call. So make sure to send this out to your teams because it was full of amazing nuggets. So thank you so much, ladies, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.